Now, the Chinese law recognizes same-sex couples, but legal sanction has not been accorded to gay marriages. Why is paranoia about population decline prompting Xi Jinping to hate the homosexuals? For China's LGBT community, these are difficult and isolating times as the nation's LGBT support groups are being forced to close one by one. Let's take a closer look. Although homosexuality was decriminalized in 1997, discrimination based on gender identity or sexual orientation is not specifically protected by the law. It is forbidden for same-sex couples to get married or adopt kids. But now the administration is even tougher. What is happening with the LGBT community in China? While it is legal to be gay in China, there are often vibrant LGBTQ social scenes in large cities. Same-sex marriage and adoption are prohibited, and LGBTQ individuals are not legally shielded from discrimination. According to Darius Longarino, a senior fellow at Yale Law School's Paul Tsai China Center who studies LGBTQ rights, many Chinese government officials see homosexuality as a malign foreign influence that is stopping youth from getting married and having children. The institution is closing at a time when Chinese officials are attempting to boost birth rates in an effort to address demographic concerns. China last year announced the first population decrease in decades, and it is now losing ground to India as the world's most populous country. LGBTQ individuals in China claim that since President Xi Jinping took office 10 years ago, he has tightened restrictions on their safe spaces. Xi Jinping has also been leading a crackdown on advocacy groups. The closing down of Beijing LGBT Center has brought even more worries to the community. The LGBTQ community in China now has even less room in the country. They feel like they are being harassed constantly. The Beijing LGBT Center was established in 2008 and has been a leading force in the fight against discrimination against women and people of color in China. Four days after celebrating its 15th anniversary and two days ahead of the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia, the center announced on WeChat that it was closing due to force majeure, a term that commonly denotes government closure in China. It's unclear if authorities gave the Beijing LGBT center's closure order. The organization denied a request for comment. The center's public relations department, located in Beijing's Chaoyang district, stated that it was unaware of the circumstances. The center, also known as Beitong, is thought to be the largest and most well-established LGBTQ organization in China. According to advocates, it provided a sense of community for sexual and gender minorities. The center's shutdown, according to Chinese-Australian writer Xing Hua Qiang, was a huge loss not only for the LGBTQ plus community in China, but for the world. Qian was a journalist in China from 2016 to 2018. Even pride marches that were once regularly held by the LGBTQ communities are being stopped. Do you think the government is trying to penalize the people associated with these communities? The Shengdu Milk LGBT Service Center made its closure public in 2019. After 11 years of operation, Shanghai Pride, the only significant annual LGBTQ event in China, announced in 2020 that it was halting all operations. LGBT rights movement, the following year, months after dozens of LGBTQ profiles managed by college students were removed from the social media site WeChat. China, which had spearheaded significant legal battles, closed down. Additionally, there has been a rise in government censorship, which includes a prohibition on television programs featuring effeminate men and boys' love dramas, which are programs portraying intimate male relationships. And 3,600 people talk about communal retirement plans in a singledom community. Many of the women who were questioned stated that their decision to remain childless and single was primarily motivated by a desire to explore their own selves, a sense of disappointment with the patriarchal dynamics of Chinese families, and a lack of enlightened male partners. 
Another factor is gender equality. According to all the women, finding a partner who respected their independence and thought that domestic chores should be divided equally was challenging. According to Chinese government data, the one-child policy implemented for decades has resulted in 32.3 million more men than women in China in 2022. Meanwhile, the population of China has decreased for the second year in a row, raising questions about how the second biggest economy in the world will continue to grow. Do you think the Chinese economy will not grow hereafter? According to data provided, there will be 1.409 billion people in China by the end of 2023, down 2.08 million from 2022. The population dropped for the first time in 60 years last year, but the most recent reduction is twice as large. However, Given the nation's record low birth rate and growing urban class, experts say this fall is predicted. According to Beijing, the birth rate has now dropped to 6.39 per 1,000 people, which puts it on pace with other developed East Asian countries like South Korea and Japan. Following the implementation of a contentious one-child policy in the 1980s to combat the overpopulation that existed at the time, the nation has observed declining birth rates for decades. In an effort to stop the population decline, the government reversed the policy in 2015 and implemented a number of additional incentives, including rewards and subsidies to encourage people to start families. The cap was further loosened in 2021 to permit couples to have up to three children. Analysts and economists question whether the Chinese government is attempting to accelerate population growth in order to prevent any other country from undermining its initiatives. What is China's population growth plan then? Due to the high expense of education and the scarcity of daycare choices, many Chinese individuals only have one kid. In response, Beijing is offering tax rebates, extended maternity leave, and housing subsidies in an effort to encourage additional births. Additionally, China forbids for-profit private tutoring businesses from charging or teaching essential topics and conducting lessons on weekends or public holidays. China's National Health Commission called on the national and local governments to enhance childcare facilities and allocate more funds for reproductive health in August of last year. China's State Council recently announced that, in addition to preferential housing for families with numerous children, such as larger public housing units, additional measures are being considered to promote flexible working hours and the ability for employees with children to work from home. Couples with multiple children are also receiving incentives in some locations. Do you think China will criminalize homosexuality in the coming years? Do share your thoughts on this in the comments section. For more interesting stories and updates, subscribe. Until next time.